<laughs> hey, Dr. G. Hey, I'm going to start streaming now. Um, so those on Facebook and YouTube. Hey, everybody, thanks for uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks for having us. Thanks yes. for having us. Thank oh, you. definitely. It's my pleasure. Um, let's get this started then, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So good morning, everybody. My name is Nana Daziganza. I'm uh, an anesthesiologist at St. Joseph's Hospital. Um, when I joined that hospital in December of 2008, I was really blown away by the level of professionalism that I saw in, in such a small community hospital coming from the university setting. And over time, I, I got to know that this, this culture was something that was old and was sort of inculcated in almost everybody who worked there. Um, and they had been nurses who had been working there forever. I got to work with a few of them and each and every day they just gave their all. And I assumed they were going to be there forever um, until earlier this year. Actually, late last year, I heard that uh, six of them, five nurses and a scrap tech would be going into retirement. I didn't want to believe it, but then it actually happened. And uh, what month was it when you guys left? June. June. Um, on a Saturday in June, 236 years of experience just walked out the doors of St. Joseph's Hospital. Um, I've always wanted to do this, sit down with them and talk to them about what made them who they were and allow them to give so much years of service. And uh, we tossed around some dates, we tossed around some methods and we decided to do this by Zoom and on those days. So um, I want to, uh, let me, uh, Adam, I want to introduce or have them introduce themselves uh, this Sunday afternoon. There's six of them. Um, you want to get started? Uh, Debbie, why don't you introduce yourself? Can you see me okay? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. What was the question, sir? Introduce yourself, each of you. Would oh, thank you. Just introduce who you My are. My name's Debbie Prophet. Registered nurse, graduated uh, BSN program 1980, and spent my entire nursing career at St. Joe from 1980 to June the 2nd, to 2022. Lisa? Uh, yes, my name is Lisa Altizer. I uh, graduated from University. Oh. Looks like we lost them. Um, well, my name's Carolyn Hall. I graduated in 1980 from Midway College with an associate degree in nursing. And I've spent the first 10 years of my nursing career at a level one trauma center and at a small community hospital where I worked emergency room, delivery room, and postpartum. And then uh, for 32 years, I've been at St. Joseph Hospital in surgery, predominantly open hearts. Um, thanks, Caroline. Um, let's, as we wait for them to, uh, to come back and they definitely will be coming back. We lost them for an instant. Um, I was going to ask you what, what made you decide to be a nurse? You know, I think I have always wanted to go into medicine since grade school and nursing is what I ultimately chose. And then I became a single parent and I was able to support me and my family on this uh, endeavor and, 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 you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the patient contact, even in surgery. One of my favorite parts of surgery is being with the patient when they go to sleep. That's, I mean, that, that is, uh, something you hear from, uh, quite very many experienced nurses and, uh, what, what, what ultimately drew you back, uh, into the, uh, okay, answer that. And, uh, hey, sure, Brian. no problem. So I'm going to let Ron field this phone call and um, I'll finish talking to you. It's Lisa. They, they lost their contact. Okay. I'm sorry. What was your last question? Um, what drew you to the operating room setting? Okay. Um, 
one of my previous jobs had been with the organ donor program, and there I was uh, orientated to surgery. And I thought, you know, if I ever leave the organ donor pro program, I want to go to surgery. And so that's what ultimately ended up there. I enjoyed the camaraderie. I enjoyed the um, team. Yeah. And I enjoyed the hours. The fact that I only had one weekend call a month and like one holiday and so forth. Yeah. Um, was there any time during this, this, these long decades of doing this where you thought to yourself, I can't do this anymore and I want to quit no. and uh, that you never. I, I, I never wanted to quit nursing. I um, sometimes I found myself looking at lawn ads to go elsewhere, but never when I was in surgery. That was before I came to surgery. I was always um, committed to our team and I didn't want to let the team down. You know, you may have some bad days, but you knew the team would support yeah. you later. Yeah, yeah. Um, what what mantra or what lesson or what philosophy kept you going? Because I mean, we, we all know it can be quite challenging sometimes. What kept you going? Oh, well, what kept me going? The team. I didn't want to let the team down, but um, and likewise, you know, if I may have a bad day, I never took a mental health day because it's like I felt like if I called in for a quote a mental health day, someone else was going to have to pick up my slack, and I didn't want that to to happen to someone else. Yeah. Um. And so after all these years of of service, uh, what lesson? What what what's one of the biggest lessons you learned about life looking back? People will be good, certainly if you allow them the chance to be in your life and be good. Um, I've always tried to leave someone with a smile on their face. If it's saying something absurd in the elevator to them, like, you know, hey, is I'm looking for children's clothing or something bizarre and let them wonder. Let them wonder if I'm saying, yeah. but just to bring a smile to their face and a brief moment and then just move on in, in life, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, it's the uh, the operative era. We know it's it's just fraught with lots of anxiety. I mean, the people are going to be put to sleep and be, have surgery and they don't really know what's going to happen. No. And I think that really helps break the ice, sometimes even more than giving them Bursted or fentanyl. And, and I've always tried to help relax them, whether I talk to them about their family or what's going on in my going on around us. Because, you know, yeah. we try to keep the chitter chatter to a minimum, but sometimes we'll say something and the patient will go, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And so we just <laughs> include them in the conversation then, and, and that relaxes them. But just to be a hand for them to hold and, uh, and, and I know they're anxious, and I would be too. If someone's getting ready to operate on you, they're, you're in a position where you have no control. So yeah. just to try to help them relax and not go into it with the right frame of mind. Is there a case you've never forgotten? I mean, there's the we in healthcare. Yeah. There's several, Could, you know, is, there I, one you, is there one you okay to share? Yeah. One... I've delivered a baby. The doctor didn't get there in time and, and I did the delivery and uh, the nursery nurse sort of helped me suck the baby out and that child was dry and never had another problem. <laughs> but, um, uh, and my payment was free pizza that night. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, Another one I had was doing an open heart case on one weekend. I was bringing the patient from the uh, CTVU over to surgery and as we're going down the hall, she says, I'm okay with the outcome of this. And I just sort of stopped her and I said, ma'am, I said, what do you mean? She's like, well, I told my family I was okay with the outcome. And I said, well, I need you to tell me that you're going to fight to live. And she's like, oh, 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 I am. And we go on, we do the surgery, we had some complications. And then ultimately she did not make it. And, you know, I remembered that and 
the patients to me, I just feel like either they know something going in or they've gotten to that point where they've lost their fight to live. Yeah, so. that that's that that is that is profound. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and how is retirement going? Well, I've been busy. Um, our daughter's getting married in two weeks, so I've been doing a lot of things with that and a lot of family functions. We've kept the grandkids some and it's just kept me on my toes. So you don't miss us? You don't want to come back and, you, you know, put you in know, some I, hours? And... I think I was disappointed <laughs> two weeks after I quit and I found out the place was still standing without me. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, miss, I miss my coworkers, but the six of us retirees are still getting together about every two weeks. So yeah, I kind of sense we, that. Yes. Yeah. We stay in touch and we're doing things and, you know, we've gone to the zoo to see the hippos and we've gone to Keeneland. We've gone out to lunch. So we're doing things. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm keeping busy and I'm looking forward to that first snowy day where I can post a picture of my cup of hot cho cocoa and my, feet and warm fuzzy socks kicking back and watching it snow while everyone's driving to work oh i had there'll be no snow this winter so <laughs> tough luck <laughs> okay i'll find some yeah. somewhere yeah or, or so else i'll um, go to a beach yeah and so for uh for those of us just joining us uh there are there's supposed to be six of them uh five nurses and a scrub tech and uh, the five of them met at uh uh Debbie's house and they are having problems connecting. So uh, Carolina and and me are trying to um, hold down the fort until they fix their connection problems. Um, and there's a discussion. Uh, let's see if it's them. Um, Ooh, this might be them coming in. Yeah, this might be them yeah. coming in. That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Um, Y'all hear us? Y'all hear us? Yes. We can hear you. Can you see us? No, we can't see you yet. Can you turn on your video? Uh oh, they're gone again. Well, that was brief. Yeah. They were almost there. So. So did you always work in cardiothoracic surgery your whole time there or were you, um, you know, maybe on first, the floor? When I first, oh, I was, I've been in surgery the whole 32 years at St. Joe. But and okay. when I first started in surgery, um, we were orientated to every department, to every area. And okay. when I sort of went to the heart team, we did not take heart call okay. at that point. We only had scrub techs on heart call. And okay. so I did general call for everything the first couple of years before we ended up with our nurses on heart call, call as well. Oh. So they're back. Yay. Yay. Hey. Hey. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right, awesome. So I think we are, Lisa was introducing herself and we'll go back to that. Hey, Lisa. Hey, um, Lisa Altizer. I graduated from University of Kentucky in 1979 with a bachelor's of nursing. I worked at the Hazard Appalachian Hospital for 10 years on their pediatric floor. Came to St. Joseph Hospital in 1989 and I just retired on September the 6th. Wow, thanks, Lisa. Uh -huh. Debbie. Hey, KP. Hi. Hi. Hello, I'm Debbie Collins. Um, I started at St. Joe in 1990. I went to Botech School before the BCTC come along. Um, I graduated there. I was hired by Jane Lester in 1990. Um, I left St. Joe for a brief time, maybe a year and a half, two years, but I came back because it was my home. Um, I love to be a scrub tech. I still love doing it. Actually, I do still work a couple days out of the month, every now and then. But um, these ladies have always been my family and my friends. They've got me through a lot through St. Joe. We've all been through a lot of things together. 
through tough, sick things and through thin things, but we've always stuck together. And we're still together now, and we're going to stay together. That's right. Yes, that's right. I, I, Debbie, I always have to say I marvel that when I see you sitting among your instruments, you look like a queen who knew where everything was. <laughs> to the needle. Well, thank you. I like to keep it all nice and clean and in its place. Yes. <laughs> hey, KP. Hello. You want to introduce is yourself? My name is Catherine Parker, and I started working at St. Joe as a nursing assistant. I worked three and a half years, and then I went to become an LPN. And I graduated in 1977 from uh, Lexington Community College, and I worked as a, a LPN until 1989 when I went to work at, uh, as an anesthesia tech. And then I graduated from nursing school or RN school in 1993. And I've been at St. Joe for a total of 45 years straight. Woo! Ooh. <laughs> hey. Hey, Jody. Hi. Hi. My name's Jody Smeichel. I graduated from UK in 1980. I went straight to the OR. Pa Jamato hired me back when they didn't take nursing uh, graduates right out of nursing school. So I was blessed to, for her to give me a chance. And I never left the OR. I, I knew that was my home and I was there for 42 years. Yeah. Wow. With yeah, thank you all so much. Yes, with yeah. these wonderful co-workers. And, and, and I, I worked with these wonderful ladies from December of 2008 until they unceremoniously escaped in June of 2020. <laughs> Ring out the door. <laughs> yeah. So whilst, whilst you guys were trying to get back, uh, Carol and I were just holding down the fourth and sort of going Thank to you. run through the same questions. So, so I'll start with you, Debbie. What made you decide to be a nurse? I mean, you are really the quintessential nurse. What made you decide to be a nurse? Well, you're never going to believe this, doctor. But uh, in preschool mm -hmm. Sunday school class, they had this nice nurse's hat in these bags with the fake stethoscope and all this. And I just really enjoyed playing with all that stuff <laughs> and putting that hat on my head. <laughs> so when it comes time to uh, decide what I wanted to do, it, it was kind of like, gee, you know, what do you do with your life? I don't know what to do with my life. Uh, I, I want to help people. And that that was the yeah. bottom line. I really wanted to help people. So it was going to be a school teacher or it was going to mm -hmm. be a nurse. And um, I said, well, I think I'm going to try this nurse deal. My mother had worked at St. Joe as a unit secretary. And uh, we had nurses that come over to the house every now and then to hang mm -hmm. out and roll their hair and talk stories and so I was kind of impressed with that camaraderie that they had and uh and hanging out with the the nurses that came over to, to hang out with mom and stuff so I said we'll try that if it doesn't work out we'll do something else wow and it worked out for so long yeah it did I started <laughs> it did. I started to uh to, to do a few other things over the years, but you know, when yeah. your heart's in something, you just got to stay. Uh, and I'll, I'll take some words out of a couple of the other mouths here. It, it's a, and it, it's, it's a healing ministry. And I, I was called to do that. Yes. Yeah. So there was never a time you thought of quitting? Oh, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, yeah, it was many a time, but you know, yeah. you always have your, your your valleys and your mountains, and you know, you got to take, you got to go through some of that stuff, and it just makes you stronger. And you know, when you when you get a little stronger with it, and you just hang in there a little longer, and and as I had thought to leave a few different times and maybe pursue a different career, I said, I just can't do that. This is what I am. I am a nurse. And, and this is what I'm going to do. And when you get positive feedback, you know, and you can leave work and feel good about the day and, and you feel like maybe you might have helped someone in, 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 in a big way or even in a small way, it just is very rewarding. And of course, working with you and um, many other disciplines and professions has been 
outstanding. Just I never dreamed that I could ever experience a life like this, really. Never dreamed. I came from a poor family. We grew up in government housing that my first three years of life. And uh, then uh, we moved and, and moved into a, a small home. And and it was, you know, when I graduated from high school, I was, you know, doing very well in high school. And my mom and dad said, we're just glad you graduated. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's not, it's not over yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much, Debbie. So Lisa, what, what made you decide to become a nurse? Well, when I was in um, high school, I was taking some health and physical education classes. I became really interested in science and the body parts, how the body works and everything. So when I went to um, college and talked with advisors, I was either going to be a teacher or a nurse. And I decided on nursing. And it's, uh, wow. it was the right decision for me. It's interesting. Debbie said the same thing. It was either going to be a teacher or a nurse. So sort of that, mm-hmm. that tendency to, to serve. And did, Lisa, did you ever think of quitting? I got really exhausted and frustrated at times, but I have, have never wanted to quit being a nurse. Yeah. yeah. Until retirement. What what, <laughs> what 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 drove you? What what gave you that strength to, to just keep going? Uh, I felt like I was called to do this job mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to quit mm-hmm. until it was finished. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's go to Debbie. Debbie, um, my my favorite scrap tech. <laughs> so, so what, what made you what what made you decide to to do that? Well, you know, growing up, I didn't. I had no idea. <clears throat> I come from a large poor family as well. There's eleven of us kids. We lived on a farm, so uh, we did move to town. And when I graduated high school, I had no idea what I was going to be. So I went to the service. <clears throat> there I got sick. Most people know I've had a transplant or two. Um, So during my process of healing, I had a recruiter that talked me into going to radiology school. And I was in radiology school and I was in the OR, you know, taking my little pictures and all this. And it just amazed me. All them people, everybody talking at the same time, but yet everybody knew what they were saying. And when it was directed to them, I just thought that was amazing. And to be able to repair a body to where it can live and be functional and stuff that just really caught my attention. And sometimes we knew how it come out and sometimes we don't, but like Deb said, when you see a patient that's out on the street, knowing you helped them get there, that's just really something awesome for me. And I still love doing it and I still do it to this day. I did leave St. Joe a couple times. No, just once, but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I was lost at the other hospitals I worked at. I went to other hospitals, but I was still a tech, um, but I was just lost. And then Jody asked me to come back and I was just blessed. I just felt like I come home to my family yeah. and they're my family. Cousin, so Joe's, see, Joe's all has that feel like you're a part of the family. Um, yes. And, and that's, that's something I've, <clears throat> I've felt ever since I worked there. Um, and, uh, I, I really marvel at scrap techs, all those instruments. I mean, put me there for one day and I guess I'll lose everything. Needles, threads, everything. <laughs> um, everything. <laughs> so, so KP, what, what made you decide to be a nurse? Well, I was a nursing assistant and I would always watch the nurses and how they took care of patients and decided that that's what I wanted to do also. And it, it's been such a blessing. There's nothing like taking care of people and helping them to get better. Or even if it's their worst day, just being with them on their worst day to get them through that day. So it, it's just been a blessing to be a nurse and to work with these wonderful people that I find myself working with. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Jody, do you want to scoot a, a bit closer to KP? KP, oh, can you scoot a bit closer okay. to Lisa? Yeah, so... Yes, okay. so we can see you now. Yes, okay. And KP, was there, KP, was there ever a time where you thought, I, I've had enough of this, I'm out? No, I never thought that. Even on bad days, it's like, this is just a bad day, and tomorrow will be better. So I always came back the next day, and usually the next day was better. 
definitely different. So I, I never once thought of quitting or working any place else. Wow. I, we used to marvel at your cool. I mean, I, when you took over the anesthesia <laughs> services, sometimes your phone will be going off like 700 <laughs> times when, you know, <laughs> somebody is asking you to find something that nobody used for like 700 years. And, uh, and you still maintain the smile and kept your cool. Yeah. 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 So, Jody, what, what? And I was always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Jody, what made you decide to be a nurse? So my grandmother Oglesby was a nurse at Cook County Hospital in Chicago. I still have some of oh, her wow. nursing books. And I, so I feel like, again, it was a, a calling for me. I started out in social work for two years at UK and I switched to nursing. I just felt like nursing was more of a fit for me. And, um, you know, just a, it's been a blessed career for me. Again, helping others. I always knew I was going to help others. So. And uh, I mean, did you ever think of quitting? I did a couple of times think about quitting. I'll, I'll admit it. Um, but again, I was just pulled back. I mean, you know, like KP says, we all had bad days there. And I'm sure we thought I, I, I just felt like I couldn't do it anymore. But the, I was still called back to do it. I was still the next day. I said, oh, OK, well, OK, it was a bad day, but I'm going back. And, I, and every time I came back, so yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's a good career. Yeah, it's it's kind of astonishing, you know, when you really think of it. And I'm I'm trying to pull up the flyer with with all the years you you guys work there. Yeah, thirty two years here. Um, so what? Jody did forty two years. Um, yes. Carolyn did thirty two. KP did forty five. Lisa did forty two. Lisa. Um, Debbie did 42, Lisa did 43. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is amazing. Um, what, what philosophy, what, what thought, what belief kept you going all these years? I, I mean, you can say you need the money for your family and all that, but I think it's a lot more than money. All right. So De Debbie, what is it that made you get up every morning and come to the OR and look for needles on the floor that that the scrap tech lost or find <laughs> stuff for the search? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, somebody's got to do it. But uh, no, it's just um, just knowing every day is a different journey. It's something new. It's not the same old thing. It may be surgery every day, but it's a different person, a different personality. You've got family, different people you meet, all kinds of different things in the world, and you're a part of trying to heal someone is why I kept going back. I go home, regroup. I'd fuss at my family and I carry on, you know, like we all do. I ain't never going back there. <laughs> <laughs> after, after you regroup, you go. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, after, after all the health issues you had to deal with, nobody would have faulted you for just hanging it up, you know, but, you know. Well, um, I like to think of myself as a fighter. I just don't hang it up. I mean, God yeah. put me here for a reason, day to day. And when it's my time, it's my time. But as long as I can walk yeah. and breathe, I'm still going to do it. That's awesome. So the other Debbie, what, what philosophy? And I know, I know you, you also had every reason to hang it up, you know. Um, but you kept going day in, day out. You know, um, what, what is it? Oh, gee, ah. That's a tough one, doctor. You know, I, I've worked since I was itty bitty. I mean, my first public job was when I was 15 years old, scooping ice cream. And, uh, you know, I've always worked and I, my parents gave me, I would say, a strong work ethic. Um, and, you know, it's a two income family these days, you know, and uh my husband always said, you know, if I quit and stayed home, that would be fine. But we'd have to move into a shack in the woods. <laughs> and I said that you can better all the time. <laughs> you, know, but, you know, I do like running water and, you know, some of the <laughs> So, you know, 
Yeah, just get up. I think, uh, like Deb said, you just put one foot in front of the other, and it just it just happens. And uh, I certainly didn't. I didn't want to change locations. Really, I didn't want to learn new phone numbers. Isn't it silly? I didn't want to <laughs> learn new routines. I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. I like people, and I wanted. I like people. I like to meet people. But once you meet people and you develop a relationship and friendships and and you know your way around somewhat you know it's I like the comfort of all that yeah you know, I like the I like like the the sofa hasn't moved in the house for 19 years other than to get the dust out <laughs> <behind it. laughs> I'm a creature yeah. of habit I'm a creature of yes. habit yeah. yeah so yeah that kept, that kept me going plus actually you know daily prayer and my husband as everybody knows, you know, he's, you know, battled, you know, uh, horrific circumstances of life. And, and he's been incredible to me, um, support, uh, encouragement, prayer. Um, I've come home from work and him with no legs, bad vision, poor left arm, dialysis, wore out. He'd say, put your feet up here in my lap and let me rub your feet and legs for you tonight, oh, you know, and yeah. golly, you can't beat that. You can't beat, yeah. you know, that kind of support and, you know, loving husband yeah. and family like that. You just, you know, so just keep on keeping on until you know it's time to stop mm -hmm. and well, to move on to other adventures. So, yeah. Thanks, Evie. So, I, Lisa, um, I'll, I'll just give a little story of a little prank I played on Lisa. So I went to see the patient, and I knew Lisa was right behind me. So I told the patient that uh, uh, he, he should ask Lisa whether she used to take care of Abraham Lincoln. And <laughs> so Lisa shows up, and the patient goes, oh, I, I heard you used to take care of Abraham Lincoln. And her eyes... <laughs> I was like, Dr. Don's already been over here. <laughs> anyway, so Lisa, what, what kept you going? Well, um, I started working when I was 14 years old. My parents insisted that I get a job and insisted that we go to college. And it was just some kind of internal drive to keep working. You know, I had to keep working. And then I feel like that was my purpose down here on earth was to be a nurse and I wanted to keep on going until I felt like it was time to stop. And it's been a great career and I've loved all my coworkers and my job and it's been a good career. Yeah, so, so KP, if you were to give an advice, just one single advice to somebody to help them keep going, what would it be? Treat everybody like family and to love them, they love you back. And, and if, you, if you love what you do and you never work a day in your life. And I never felt like it was work. I just felt like I was going to take care of family and friends and I just enjoyed every moment of it. Yeah. J Jody, I always looked at you more like the commander of the ship. I mean, that, that is how you always <laughs> came across, you know. And uh, it, it it, it lends credence to the fact that leadership matters. The president who oversees it all matters, that in spite of the fact that we are um, taking care of sick people, somebody has to man that ship anyway to make sure that process goes in. You, you did it really well. I mean, what, okay. what, what, what part of you would you say made you do it so effortlessly for so long? It I just, from the very beginning, I felt like that's what I was called to do. And I know people have said, well, you know, it's a, I, I wouldn't do that job for all the money in the world. No way would I ever do it. To me, it was kind of just my calling. It just felt like that's what I should be doing. And I'd never, I never questioned it. I never questioned that feeling that I had. Um, that that's what I was supposed to do with my career. And it, it was a wonderful career. I, I don't know how I did it, tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. So can, let's, can yeah, Carolyn, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Jody needs to have that coffee every morning to do her job. <laughs> if she doesn't have the coffee, hang it up. 
it's going to be a bad day. Watch out. Time. You don't talk. But again, I mean, again, it was working with everybody. It was the teamwork. It was the teamwork of the OR that I was so drawn to from the very beginning. We all worked together as a team. You know, no one was more important than the next person. We all worked together to give that patient the best care for the time that we had that patient in the operating room. And I was so drawn to that that I just, I, I loved it. I really did. Even on the bad days. Yeah, yeah she made it look so, easy, but it wasn't. Yeah, she, she made And looking at all, all the egos you had to deal with, um, it wasn't easy. Um, <laughs> so... Out of the or Carola, out of the OR, what did you do for fun? Because Lord knows we need something to take off that pressure sometimes. What did you do for fun? Me? Yeah. I have, I have four kids. <laughs> oh, here. Uh -huh. Four uh, generations <laughs> apart. So <laughs> I'm, I'm still raising them. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Ray, helping with the kids was your outlet, would you say? Oh, yeah. I mean, from like, when the kids were doing swim team, they would be on three different swim teams at the same time. So I was always the chauffeur, driving them to swim practice, going to swim meets, going out of town for weekends for the swim meets. So that was, I was always really family oriented with that, but it was my work friends who would always keep me grounded. When I, they, they were truly a family. When I had things I need to bounce off of, anyone that it was they were my family and when I first interviewed at St. Joe I was impressed by the number of years Jane Lister had been there and she's the one who interviewed me mm -hmm. and the couple of other people who interviewed me had been there 30 years 20 years and I was like wow you know that you yeah. have been here that long and then here I ended up being there 32 years it, it's it's your co-workers that keep you there mm -hmm. you're right exactly. you're right yes yeah mm -hmm. Debbie, is there, Debbie, uh, Prophet, is there, I mean, I know that the latter part of the years you, you spend most of your waking hours, you know, helping at home um, um, with your with your husband, but before that, was, was there a hobby, anything that kept you just, you know, just took up the pressure? Was there anything you did? To help with the pressure? Yeah. Oh, gee. You know... There is nothing like family. You know, it's been mentioned. You got your, you got your, you got your home family. You got your student family. You got your work family. And you know, I, I just, I, I feel for people that are lonely, and you know, don't have family, and or or someone to call up and talk to, or or whatever. And you know, these, I, 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 I really can say that. Well, I'll not go there, but otherwise, um, you know, we, we get into a lot of church activities and my husband likes to go and do, and he is like a energizer burnt bunny. And uh, yeah. so we, you know, that, you know, is a nice balance to work too, that he likes to, yeah. you know, work in the yard. And so we've been doing some gardening and I love to cook. And I like to experiment with uh, cooking and developing on that and scrapbooking and reading and, and then look forward to getting together with this retirement crew. You know, we are a motley crew, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and it's just fabulous. And it's been a wonderful bridge on this uh second life or third life or whatever we've got going on here because you know yeah. had we not gotten together and started this it might have been a little you know need for a psychiatrist or something but you know we're all in a similar boat with a, with life and we're enjoying it some together and I'm just glad that it's worked out this way and yeah. we're getting together with some some more people in a couple of weeks and yeah, life's good, Doc. Life's good. And yeah. people like you really, really help with that. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So yeah. much, thank, thank you. you. Oh, you yeah. so thank you. That, yeah, you know, this is this is all a ploy. I want you all to come back. So don't don't <laughs> Yeah, so so that De De Debbie Collins this time. Is there anything you do outside the OR that just kept keep helps to keep you going a hobby? 
No, I don't really have a lot of hobbies or do much of anything. Most of you know I'm not married. I don't have kids of my own or anything like that. But I have thrown my whole life into my family, my best friend, mm -hmm. and they've helped me through everything I've had to go through in life. And that's been a lot. And I'm always on the road. Everybody thinks I've got kids because I've always got a band full of children. I'm either at a ball <laughs> yeah. game, basketball game. Yeah. Last night I was trick-or-treating with all of them. So it's yeah. just my family that keeps me going. Plus my going. family here. Yeah, yeah. Miss Lisa, mm -hmm. I know I know your love for your little dog. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what, what else outside the OR keeps you going? Well, I like to read shop, travel, love animals. I've got two little poodles and I've got some really close friends and uh, just enjoying them. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Hey, Kippy. So what Hi. outside the aura keeps you going? Hey. Uh, it's like everyone else has said. I've got my family. I've got my church family and I've got my work family. Just spending time with them and just moving around. I do love to read. Uh, I'm going to just continue to enjoy the life, but the family is what keeps me going. Um, oh. Hey, Jody. so what else I know? I know you love to golf, that much I know. What, yes, what I else? Do. I do. <laughs> so uh, I'd say, you know, my faith, family, and friends. Uh, I just got back from a trip with my family. I have family in Minnesota, Nebraska in Boston. Um, we just had a family reunion out uh, in the Boston area. And see, I wouldn't have had time to do that before, you know, because mm -hmm. you only get the four weeks and this was an extended vacation, get together. And I am, you know, I'm so thankful for, for those kind of things. Um, and I like to boat, my husband and I have a boat. So we enjoy that in the summer. Um, yeah. And, uh, Spending time with friends. Well, some oh, yeah. some friends I haven't seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, having the time to do that now has been yeah. a true yeah. blessing. True Not that on a yeah. time schedule is the best. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. You can go. Do you want to go to yeah. lunch? Sure. Yeah, let's uh, go. I mean, yeah. like we do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's the wonderful yeah. thing about. We just are. jump up and go. Yeah. Not having to get up at five a.m. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 One a.m. or two a.m. or three. Oh, two a.m. <laughs> for that for that bring back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's remark. It's remarkable that the importance of family at work and at home because everybody, each one of you, uh, brought up family either at work or at home and in how important it is that you could keep going. Uh, so let's, let's do a little bit more of, uh, let's say, remembering. Um, mm -hmm. Miss Debbie, let's start with you, Debbie Prophet. Is there a case that has stayed with you all these years that you were mm -hmm. involved in? I talked to Carolyn earlier. She had two uh, examples mm -hmm. that she shared. But is there a case that you, you were involved in in all these years that you've never forgotten? Oh, gee. You know, there's been so many, um, so, so many, but there's, there's two that stick out in my mind of recent that really, you know, hit my heart. And uh, one of them, Lisa, well, Lisa and I were involved in both of them, actually. And uh, one of them was an elderly woman that had some major, major cardiac surgery. And for her to have lived through it was a miracle all on its own. And uh, she had a, a stormy uh, recovery period and uh, very stormy and survived. And um, we would go visit her every day that we could and wave at her and put a thumbs up and so forth. And when she finally... Uh, came to and was alert, which, which was at least two weeks later, um, her surgeon was out of town in Denver. And I said, Lisa, let's get him on Facebook and let her talk to him. And I asked the lady, I said, you know, you haven't seen your doctor in a few days. And she said, I miss him. And I said, you want to talk to him? I bet we can get him on the phone. And uh, so this little modern technology of Facebook was very entertaining. And 
we called him up and he answered the phone and they got to talk long distance and her in a CTVU bed and uh, and the joy on both of their faces of this wow. making it was just it just makes me want to cry when I think about yeah. that woman. And then yeah. another patient of recent I grew extremely attached to and I don't know why or how it happened. Um, but I found myself taking the wife, um, they, they were in surgery for like 21 hours and, uh, and he was not an older person. He was a young man with a young family. And, um, I found myself taking coffee and a small breakfast to his wife every morning. And then a couple of mornings, you know, I was out of work or at home or in another room and couldn't get away, you know, to get over to take it to them or something. And I'd call Lisa, Lisa, can you go over this morning? Please take her a cup of coffee and a donut. And I'll pay you back, you know, <laughs> and she'd do it, you know. And then one of uh, our other friends who uh, is quite entertaining, I'll, I'll mention his name as, as, as Nathan. <laughs> I, he was had some spare time one morning and I did not really have it. And I begged him to go downstairs and pick up the Roy special mm-hmm. and take it over to them. And he's like, I ain't doing that for you, Debbie. And I'm like, oh, come on, help a girl out. I have no time. I have no time. Mm-hmm. Oh, OK, OK. And, uh, I gave him a credit card and he said, I might do it. I might not, you know, <laughs> and so. And, and he knew, everyone knew about this particular patient and their circumstances. And he went over and he typically didn't go visit patients post-op and he got to visit with them and, and uh, talk a little and, and deliver the, the Roy special. And uh, it was just awesome. Just this relationship that developed between the patient and family and family members and, and my coworkers, them joining in and I mean you know we do these kinds of things it just it just happens and then the day they got ready to leave um she had my phone number and they took a picture of him leaving in the wheelchair waving and sent it to me I cried and uh then when they got home and all the youngsters were around him in his easy chair they took pictures and sent them to me and you know just to see that man and that family get to to be together hopefully several more years. Those, those were a couple of a recent special cases. There's been a lot of special cases, but those two recent, you know, stick with me quite a bit. Thank you. Uh, Miss Lisa, is there, is there anything, an event, a case that has stayed with you all these years? Well, I think about some of our cardiac patients that have came in extremely ill that I didn't, wasn't sure if they were gonna survive. And they ended up surviving, going to the unit, and then going back home to their families, especially like the redos, the Ross procedures. I mean, you all have done an awesome job taking care of these critical patients, and it's just been a blessing to work with you all. Thank you. Ms. Debbie Collins, any, anything that happened in all these years that stayed with you, sort of being a... Well, there's a lot of things that stay with you and happen. <clears throat> but the one I remember a lot the most was a young man. He was a patient. He was a CODA patient. And, you know, we always do the walk of life in the hallway and stuff. And his little girl mm-hmm. was out there. She's about eight. And his wife. But his little girl was just, you know, she was just devastated. She she grabbed a hold of him. They managed to let her go. She got a hold of him in his bed. And. I grabbed her and talked to her. I took her back to a room and talked to her a little bit and told her about things and let her know that, you know, what her father was doing was continuing lives for other people and that I was one of those people was in the past. Mm-hmm. And it's really wow. great for, that, uh, you know, trying to make her understand what was happening and what was going on it ease her a little bit. And she was very, very sweet. And then I went back and we did the Dakota case. I mean, a Dakota case is a, is a very large case. Teams come from everywhere to harvest, yeah. but um, that little girl just stayed with me forever. And for a while after that, I would go and check on her and her mother after work at the end of the day, see if they needed anything. I just stayed in touch with her for a few months to let her know that it was okay and she would be good. And I just kept that forever. 
I, I mean, Debbie, this is so profound, knowing that you are a recipient yourself and then giving solace to someone whose dad was was donating organs. I, I, I find that so profound. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, um, you were. Yes. Yeah. Profound. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Debbie, you know, you just, sorry, go ahead. You just have to. I mean, she just broke my heart. Yeah. 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 Um, wow. KP, is there is there any story that you you care to share? Something that yeah. you well, you know, of course I was in on a lot of cases, but I enjoyed helping the ENT doctors when you have a devastating uh, event going on head and neck wise where people can see what's going on and be a part of getting them to be where, you know, they're relieved of their illness and helping them to realize that even though they may have some deformity left, that they still have a lot of life left in them and to help them to get through that. But I enjoy making a difference with those particular patients that uh, were having troubles. They probably stand out more than the rest. Yeah. Thanks. Jody, is there any some anything that happened that in those in those walls that stuck with you? Well, I think, I think the uh first, you know, when we'd have new procedures like the beginning of the laser program, the beginning of laparoscopic surgeries, the beginning of robotic surgeries. I mean, just think of all the things that have come while we were there to better you know, the surgery department and, and have and these patients get a better life because of the advancements in technology. So many, so many. I mean, we started out with eight ORs. We ended up with 22 before we left. And all the surgeons and the staff that have come and gone through then, I wish we would have kept a photo album of them yeah. all told mm -hmm. them this yeah. of all of them, every one of them because they all contributed yeah. to the OR so, right. to the new procedures to you know developing that OR to making the, the, the OR that it is today so I think I think that's what's really stuck with me all right well I just read a little comment from Evelyn. Um, she said, I love and miss you all so much. I'm so grateful for all the years we worked together and so happy that all of you are enjoying your retirement. Hope someday to get to join you. And uh, thank you, Dr. Gansa, for making this happen. And uh, if you guys ever want to work, please come back. That last sentence is mine. <laughs> 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 so, so how is how is retirement going? I know I know you girls are having a lot of fun. I mean, how's retirement going? Great, Carolyn. How's great. retirement going? Great. It is yeah. fabulous. It really is. It's yeah. great, Dr. Bounds. But I think we need I, this bridge. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We needed this group to go through it together. Yes, I, I feel I so feel much yes. better yes. than yeah. just doing it on our oh, doing, doing it on our own. own. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea that, that this group would continue even to, to this point. Not that I will go out four or five times, that'll be it. But uh, I think we're hooked at the hips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lifelong, it's been a yes. lifelong friendship and it's going to continue to be a lifelong mm -hmm. friendship. Yes. And yeah. a connection. You know, we have a connection and yeah. you can't, it, it, it really can't get broken. And yeah. It's this retirement. I wished I had known how nice it was, <laughs> you know, 10 years ago and had, you mm -hmm. know, perhaps, you know, increased my savings program. <laughs> <laughs> and to think yeah. it all started in a limo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things start, start in limos, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that exit and your picture taking yes. And, yes. and photography and support. And I said, oh, man, Dr. Guns is going to get us on film here and to get to leave in style of uh, music and posters and so on. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a great time. And, you know, these girls here, you know, we know we can call each other at any point in time and 
we're here for each other mm -hmm. and that's what friends are for you know and uh i'm gonna cry yeah. you know <laughs> you know because hey you know, hey there's there's no crying on zoom <laughs> <laughs> But the best part is being able to do what you want to do when you want to. Like, yes. I just got back from Florida. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> but to be able to say, can you do this? And to be able to say, yes. Oh, yeah. I don't have to wonder if I've got call time. or do I have to go yeah. to work. Do I have enough time to do it? Mm -hmm. But just to be able to say, yes, I want to do that. And to be able to participate in things that we didn't have to we weren't able to do before and now right. we have time so that's been right. the best part of it it is the best part. oh yeah keep 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 rubbing it in just keep rubbing <laughs> it in <laughs> so yeah. I've, I've always felt and i i know i discussed it with some of you but i've always felt retirement is a trap i mean I, I know you've heard me say this um and but looking at you i i realized that if if you plan it well it really could be a very fulfilling part of your life. And uh, I can imagine that if yes. you had mm -hmm. retired in different, at different times where you didn't have this camaraderie, maybe it wouldn't be this good. Am I wrong? I think you're right. You're right. Yeah, you are yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It has been amazing going to retire with these ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Retiring alone would be lonely. Yeah. 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 So I should maybe I should get the whole anesthesia group to retire together. Oh, you know, no. so. <laughs> <laughs> if we win the lottery, well, more of us will retire. <laughs> yeah. At least five or six of them. <laughs> At least five or six. So, um, yeah. So what um and I'm gonna start with Carlin. So there are a lot of I let me say this properly. The, the culture of nursing on who are nurses has changed over the years. Um, ever since at least I've been doing this. Um, what advice would you have for a younger nurse starting out today? Um, you know, bed, I think side, it's, bed side nursing is hard. Yeah. I think Go it's ahead. much more technical now than it was when we started out. You know, when I started out in nursing in the dark ages, we still had families who would put grandma in the hospital for a few days so they could take a vacation. Yes. And we babysit grandma <laughs> for a week. And um, we see yeah. great advancement really? in nursing and, and in medicine, just going from glass IV bottles. Best thing we ever got rid of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's not as much hands-on caring as it used to be i think they're so busy with more with a higher acuity level and technical stuff that i don't know that the nurses have the same connection with their patients that we used to have and you know surgery is a little bit different because even in surgery they still have that chance to be with the patient going to sleep and that part but like floor nursing i think it's totally changed yeah it's not, I, I, I don't know what to tell them to do, but I think they need to really try to go back to some of the hands-on stuff they do. I, I, I go to the floor and I, I think it's close to impossible for them. Um, I, I see a lot of young nurses who don't have much guidance. I see a lot of young nurses with a lot of patients who look overwhelmed. Um, yeah. So maybe that that one-on-one -on -one thing is a, a, a a thing of the past. Um, what What do you think, Miss Debbie Prophet? Hmm. Ah, ditto. No, I'm not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I tell you, yeah, everything Carolyn and you just said is just just right on, and I think that one of the biggest disservices that we've done as a nursing group is is that a lot of the um, education has changed into a technical education instead of a hands-on education. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I first started out, we had an incredible group of educators through the hospital. And if you had a need or a learning need that needed some hands-on, 
they were, you could call them up and they would come and be there with you. Mm-hmm. You know, we had to start, I don't know, 15 successful great IVs before we could go out and do them on our own. And that had to be done on people, you know, and if you had a, a, a question, you know, uh, you know, you could call up your educator and they would be right there with you with an answer or get back with you with that. Um, on the flip side, you know, a lot of the technology does make it easier to access a lot of information that you may want. And, uh, but I miss, I miss a lot of the, the nurses today don't seem to have, it's a different generation and they don't have the camaraderie that I think some of the more experienced nurses have. And they, uh, they don't have a lot of people that they can go to. And, and say, what about this? Or have you got any ideas? What about that? Or can you come see this? And, and, and they don't have the time either to really do that, it appears. And um, uh, following rules and regulations has been difficult even for them to follow. And now with the onset of a lot of uh, employees being temporary or um, in a, a traveling type situation, coming and going, you know, it's a lot of relationships don't get to really develop into, you know, uh, helping relationships. And, you know, the, those are some things that have bothered me about, you know, the advances in nursing that I, I wish we get back to some of the old school kind of ways like that. You know, I remember when Sister Michael Leo would come to the floor and smile and perhaps shake your hand and and ask you how your day's going and we call you by your name and you're going, how do you know my name? And she knew everyone's name. And when, um, when joint commission and so forth would come around, I remember her one day getting down on her hands and knees. It's hard to believe with a butter knife, scraping some tape off of some wheels, being an example to others on things that can be done. And I am, like Jody said, no better than you to take care of our equipment, our hospital, our patients and ourselves. And uh, you don't see a lot of that anymore. And and I, I miss that. Yeah. Ms. Debbie Collins, so <laughs> what what advice would you give to those, those the scrub techs coming up, up behind you? Um, it is still a challenging um, job. Well, um, I consider myself old school. The way people no. learn, but yeah, <laughs> the way people learn back then is totally different. You you go through your clinicals and everything is different now than it was then. Um, you have to be comfortable with yourself and not fall apart because your your doctor yells at you one time for something. You got to understand that man or that lady is going through a lot of things. And a lot of things in their mind, they're trying to save a person. They're not trying to be ugly to you. They're not trying to be mean to you. Shake it off. Keep going. But you have to be proud of your work. Like you said earlier, I always like to keep my table clean and neat. I know what I got. Know where it's at. So an emergency happens, I know what I got. I know what he needs. I know what he needs. He don't have to tell me. You have to take pride in your work. Nowadays, these kids don't care. They don't, it doesn't matter. They just walk in. They're worried about when it's lunchtime. All they're doing is watching the clock. I'm like, you need to pay attention down here. And that makes you become a good person and a person that cares about your patient that's laying there on that table and know what your whole room's doing. You have to know what your whole room's doing. You don't, but you don't conversate over here. You conversate here at your table. But they just need to start caring about what they're doing. And even though it's different nowadays, but it's still a prideful job and you have to do it. And you're a team in that room. Everybody that walks in that room is your team, even if they're in just relieving your lunch. You know, you just, I just love my job. And I think others should take, when you're trying to teach someone something, you need to pay attention. Even if, you don't care as much as they do. You still need to be there and watch what's going on because you are the future. Thank you. Yeah, excellent, yeah, Debbie. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's just how I Ms. feel. Lisa, yeah. Miss Lisa, what advice would you give to the up and coming nurse or oh, circulator? Um, what, what pearl of wisdom? Well, if you don't know how to do something, ask. Don't be afraid to ask. And uh, when you're given medications and things like that, know what they're for, what they're used for. And I guess mainly just, you know, try to be safe. Thank you. <laughs> KP, in all of your years, if, if you were to give advice to an up-and-coming nurse or speculator or somebody trying to walk in that same path, what, what would you tell them? Well, I want, there's a lot of technology going on and that's fine. But remember that person, if they're in surgery, laying on the table or in the bed, is a human. And to treat everybody fairly, treat everybody the same and take care of them as if they were your family. And you can't go wrong if you're looking at them as family. Hopefully family you like. <laughs> 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 Thanks, KP. So, Miss Jody, what 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 advice would you give to somebody following in your footsteps? I uh, also think I, I used to uh, be at the board. I would think now that is somebody's family going by. So, I have done have I done everything for that room that I possibly can to take care of that patient? So that's how I what advice I would give. Look at that patient, whether it's on the floor, whatever area you find that you love to work in, look at look at that patient as, as, as family. And the other thing is too, you know, in today's world where people hop in jobs all the time, you know, I would give them advice, hang in there a little longer than, well, I don't like to do this, I'm out. You know, try to hang in there and see if that's your spot or not, because you're never going to find it if you're hopping around, if you're moving job to job. It's a good one, Joe. True. Yeah. Very true. Well, thank you all so much for, for this. We just went over a little bit over an hour. Um, Riwa wrote this, and I just want to read it out. Lisa, I think about all our days with Dr. Hicks um, mm -hmm. and telling you stories about my son. And then she said, I don't want an invite to your next gathering. So... I'll throw it out there. And then Shelly said, in the 25 years during my career, the 12 and a half I spent with you all at St. Joe's was my favorite. I became a better scrub and grew as a young woman because of your influence in my work and in my life. You became my family back then and St. Joe's will always be my home. I love you all. So that's from Shelly. Um, I, I want to say thank you all for making the time out of your busy schedule. To <laughs> <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to have this conversation thank you all so much and um thank you so i'm, much. I'm glad we could do this thank you yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you doctor. I, I i i miss so much every minute we spend working together uh with all of you um and i wish you even more fun in your retirement years and anytime you want to come back uh i, I bet st joe's would take you back with open out Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And have a good rest of the day. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.